The first year player draft is the primary mechanism of Major League Baseball. It assigns amateur baseball players from high schools, colleges, and other amateur baseball clubs to its teams. The draft order is determined based on the previous season standings with the team possessing the worst record receiving the first pick. Unlike most sports drafts, the first year player draft is held during the middle of the season, and it is the largest in comparison to those of other major professional sports leagues. Why am I pursuing this? You throw this close to 100 miles an hour, good luck. That was just plain nasty. This young man from Missouri State is charged up. You see that fist pump? When I was in third grade, I can vividly remember you know, a story of I was sitting in math class. I actually walked over to the window and looked out the window because it was like an overcast rainy day. I knew I had a game that night. So he says to his teacher, uh, Miss Deej, can you send an email to my mom and make sure my game's still on? She told us about that and, and she was like, he's not learning much math today. And we just knew, you know, he just had such a passion for it. Obviously growing up, like it was only us two, so we did everything together pretty much. And we would play wiffle ball all the time. I was terrible and it would probably end in me like getting mad because he was throwing it too hard or whatever and I would like, go tell mom to make him throw it softer for me. There was this one time where he was pitching and I was up to bat and I fouled the ball off and it got stuck in one of our trees. He was very particular about like which wiffle ball he wanted to pitch to me because he wanted to be able to like throw the best curveball and drag me out. So he needed this wiffle ball. We go over to the tree and we're like trying to shake the branches to get it down a little bit, not coming down. He decides that to get the ball down, we're gonna throw a wooden bat into the tree. He chucks this wooden bat into the air, does not go anywhere near the tree and ends up busting out the back window of my mom's Durango. As soon as it happened, we were like, oh no. This is the worst case scenario. Like, what are we gonna tell mom? What are we gonna do? That one definitely threw him right under the bus on that. I was like, mm -mm, this is not on me, dude. Like, you're the one that decided to throw the bat. This one's on you. We didn't get to throw uh, bats into the trees after that one. Growing up, I was terrified of pitching. I was gonna hit a kid or I couldn't throw a strike. I mean, I was not about it. I was more like I wanted to be, you know, catcher or shortstop. But once I started pitching, it was, I kind of fell in love with being in control of the game and having that adrenaline rush, I guess, pre-pitch, you know, pre-game, having you're, you're the pitcher. So that's kind of when I started pitching, when I was like almost 11 or 12. When they were little, we always used to, you know, tell them, you know, keep your, keep your circle small. Always remember who you are. I mean, that was like a normal phrase when, we, when they walked out of our house, remember who you are. That was definitely something that my dad had said to us when we would leave the house, remember who you are. And then just a funny thing Shannon used to say all the time uh, to them was, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And, and so we even tease about that now, you know, it, it's really true. Going into my f freshman, sophomore year of high school, uh, my success had kind of continued to rise a little bit on a higher level than just like a local level. I remember it was in Florida, now we were playing in Florida and I threw a complete game shutout and it was one of those, I kind of looked at my dad in the dugout and I was like, this isn't, like this could be something for real. As the years kind of progressed, you know, junior year, I had the college coaches started calling me, recruiting me. And then senior year after I was committed to Missouri State, I started getting, you know, draft interest. And I was like, I thought I was just gonna go to school. And then like the last four weeks of our season, slowly but surely I started seeing more, you know, major league scouts coming around and for me, it was like, whoa, what is this? My initial thoughts of the MLB draft process as a senior, I honestly didn't have, an, I didn't have any idea of what was going on. Some of my friends had been drafted before, but I didn't really understand the whole process. This second time around is a little bit different because to be quite honest with you, the draft's a month later than it usually has been, you know, the entire the draft, you know, usually it's in June. Well, this year it got pushed back to July. I haven't pitched or played in a game since the end of May. Like that was our last time coming off my junior year. Uh, how do I keep my body in shape? The way I would keep it on is if the, the draft was in June and not in July. So for me, you know, it was a lot of coming home and you know staying on the three or four days a week workout program, throwing two to three times a week, you know, getting my bullpens in and maintaining the same usage that I would have had during the season as we were continuing to play or had the draft been in June, you know, I'm already drafted, the draft's already gone. To be honest with you, it kind of takes a toll on you mentally. With raising our children, uh, we have always tried to 
give them a firm foundation. Go to the Lord. Um, and sorry, it, it, it really means a lot to me that our family has become so faith-centered. You know, that whole college recruiting phase, and, and then with our son and our daughter, and then now this whole draft phase of not knowing what to expect. You, you just kind of just got to sit back and let Jesus take the wheel. Everything that from the draft process is out of my control. Ultimately, I feel like this is my calling, and if I if I'm comfortable with it, then there should be no fear. Because if it's His plans, then everything's going to work out the way it should work out. Jeremiah 29:11 is a verse that I've gone to for a really long time in my life. And you know, as an athlete, you don't really know what's next as far as you know, this next game. When's your last game going to be? But there's a life for me outside of baseball, regardless of whenever it starts and ends. You know, I have to continue to live life whenever baseball's over. And for me, just having that faith and trust and that God has the best plans for my life and that my plans are not the correct plans for life, regardless of how much I want them to be. God's plans are always better than your own plans. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. There's not a lot of kids around the country that get to do something like this. Be yourself, live in the moment, and just let it rip.